We have our next talk. You have our attention. We're ready for you. Thank you so much. Where's the, there is the clicker. All right, so it's early morning, uh, first of all. Hope to get you guys uh, moving a little bit and maybe a little bit interested in what we're working on. Um, so basically the idea is that I'm going to talk about in the next 10 minutes is how do you maximize the ROI in NFT projects, mainly looking at the performance marketing aspect of it. So uh, who am I? I'm Yaniv, I'm the CEO of Spear, currently in Reach. Uh, over 15 years of experience doing big data and AI in various locations, uh, varying from uh, my studies in NYU, in the Israeli army, and basically my main goal is around how do you turn data-driven, go-to-market organizations to be more data-driven. So what is the value even of data-driven go-to-market? And there are four, five main areas where I want to touch up, upon. The first one is better, better customer targeting. We see that every single day. All the big companies are trying to target us in a very specific manner and target us at the right time at the right moment. And that is exactly what more companies are starting to do in Web3, especially when you have all the information. But the value of data-driven go-to-market in Web2 is very obvious. The improved sales performance, who doesn't want more sales? Enhanced customer experience, you want to give the best customer availability for your customers. Competitive advantage and better return on investment. So the MerTech stack in Web2 has been huge. It's been growing tremendously. All these companies have been great, Salesforce, HubSpot, AppsFlyer. But when going onto the Web3 space, suddenly a shift is needed. Suddenly those data infrastructure doesn't work within this area, especially when all the data goes on chain and everything that you want to really figure out to become data driven doesn't necessarily look the same. So a shift basically is needed. A shift is needed in the way we look at it, that you can't only look at spray and pray and try to spray and pray and get people to actually buy your NFT project, buy into your Web3 project. And we need to look at the things differently. We need to make sure that whichever person comes into our community or comes into uh, our network is actually getting the added value of it. And so this is pretty much what we enable companies to do. So what is the data-driven approach in Web3 look like? Basically, market trend analysis. The first thing is that you want to make sure that you take all the data-driven approach that you can, and you have everything on the blockchain. We'll look at that in a second and get a complete market trend analysis on your competitors, your partnership. Make sure that you select the right partners given their value of the walls that they have within their communities. The second thing is user lifecycle and behavior. This is very well known in the Web2 space, but suddenly in Web3, we completely forgot about it. We don't talk about churned users much. We don't talk about new users. We don't talk about adopted users. We don't break our different users and wallets onto different life cycles in order to actually understand who is the key user that we really want to target? Who are your ICP and who are the users that you really want to engage with? Messaging based on blockchain analytics. If I know, for example, that I'm building an NFT and I know that a wallet that interacted with my NFT has been very interested in DeFi, has been really interested in NFTs, has been really interested in GameFi, I'm sorry. Why not message them on what they can do with an NFT with a DeFi? Why not uh, message them around what they can do with their NFT within, in, within GameFi? Get them more engaged towards your project in ways which are out there in public and you can use. And obviously optimize your different marketing channels. Now, it all focuses around one value that you can see, which is basically the wallet. So if we look at the wallet or the list of wallets uh, of users, then there is a lot of things that we can extract out of it. And sometimes people don't even look at that. The first one is interests. What is the, what is the wallet or the user in front of you that you're actually interested in? Are they interested in DeFi? Are they interested in GameFi? Are they interested in very specific NFT projects? What activities they do on the blockchain? The second one is LTV. What is the lifetime value? Very common term, obviously, but suddenly Web3 companies don't even measure that. What is the customer acquisition cost? How much does it cost me to bring in the next user uh, compared to the rest of the users that I currently have? All right. Uh, the RPU, the average return per user, uh, the spending habits. How much money does a usual user usually spend? For example, if a user is used to spending $100 in NFTs, they're not going to buy $1,000 NFT suddenly. It really is all narrowed down onto what is it that specifically you can get out of a wallet. Attribution, you can attribute different activities onto different platforms depending on where the users come from. Activities and holdings. Now. All of that looks very tremendous and very huge, but actually looking at the data-driven ability on the blockchain, actually translating transactions onto these different values is very feasible. Uh, and that's what makes our companies that work with us um, way more data-driven and way more analyzed, analyzing those different values and able to really target the users the right way. 
So if we agree upon all that, that all of these eight values come around, so the next slide might be pretty chill for you. I mean, we need to reshape the future. We need to rebuild how the golden market stack looks within the different Web3 companies. And the way I usually should tell uh, companies that work with us is there are four stages to it, and it's really going back to fundamental. It's like the first thing is we analyze, uh, so we enable our customers within Enrich to first of all analyze what their competitors do, what their partnerships do, basically get their all on-chain activity from there. Plan what is your next marketing campaign. How do you want to approach it? What is the messaging that you want to bring around the user? All these beautiful things that we talked about that wallets enable can suddenly become a reality. Automate processes around this. Many companies don't do that, and that's the biggest problem sometimes is actually reaching the user and actually enabling users to do activities is by automating processes around your user base, making your top priority users more active and more engaged uh, within your very specific uh, use cases. And last but not least, measure, obviously. Measure and repeat. Um, if any of this is interesting to all of you, feel free to reach me out afterwards because this is exactly what we enable every single one of our companies to do in a way, in much better manner within the Web3 space, starting from the analyzing up to the measuring with a complete SaaS platform. And the interesting thing, I think, is that we're actually shaping the future. So if we look back at 2011 in the Web2 Meritech stack, there were less than uh, 100 companies, 150 companies roughly, that started and built out what that shape of form looks like and what that marketing stack looks like for Web2 companies. And it grew to be almost 10,000 companies by 2022. Looking at the Web3 Meritech that was latest published around a few months ago, we're talking about less around 160 companies. So it's like back to 2011 in terms of technology, in terms of things that we even talk about, in terms of what the playbook looks like. And there's a huge potential here. Now, if you take the step forward, and you actually try and engage with those companies, try to rebuild what this future looks like, you can you know, earn from both cases, basically shape what the future or what the playbook of the marketing aspect looks like or the Meritech stack, and on the second aspect of it, actually be an early adopter to a lot of these tools. I find it exciting. If you think that any of this would be of any interest for you uh, in any shape or form, feel free to contact me afterwards. Um, and feel free to reach me on Telegram, and yes, that's pretty much it. We have two minutes left uh, uh, for our MC, which is joining me uh, for a two-minute session. If somebody raises their hand the next two seconds and wants to, okay, go ahead, question. Yes. What is it? I was waiting for the camera, I apologize. Every wave to the camera. I mean, let's not let him be lonely. Let's all wave to the camera. Okay. MarTech. Yes. When you look at MarTech for Web3, yes. is there, are there any companies that you think are doing things in a way that they're building for a decade, maybe for a century, and you feel like this company has a very likelihood, has a high likelihood of being successful for the long term? Except from us? Except. So then why your company? Or if you have somebody else, yeah. what, what do you think stands out? I, I think there are two, two things that stand out. First of all is understanding that you actually have like a growth OS mindset, uh, basically being able to take all the data-driven approach um, and not just be, all right, I'm, I'm going to spray and pray and not use any technique, which you've seen a lot of it, especially in the bull market and suddenly within the bear market, companies actually start to understand that growth is not only let's spray and pray and spend money and somebody will come in and just buy whatever it is they need, um, but they actually need to be effective around how they spend their money, where they spend it, and really m go back, same slide as going back to basics, just go back to basics. Right. So whichever company within the Meritech stack actually understand that, those are the companies that are going to win for the long term because they would enable their companies above them to grow. I always tell the companies that we work with, if you make more money, I make more money. It's that simple. Uh, and at the end of the day, once you change the, uh, the equation to, to look like that, yeah. that's the best thing. Thank you so much. Uh, right on time. Right on time. Thank, Thank you, my so friend. Much. Thank Thanks you. So All right.